It's a moment we've been waiting for all day. Oh yes, oh yes. Falling off the bone. Moist, juicy, brown. See how our shield worked? Oh. Now this is not your Norman Rockwell Thanksgiving picture perfect turkey and we weren't going for that. You know what we we're going for? Quick, simple, and delicious. You couldn't have made it quicker. I'm going to let this set. They say let it set for 30 minutes and then go ahead and cut it. If you don't, um, let it set for a while. Then when you're cutting it, it can let okay, out. Okay, so you might have to move out. the turkey forward or back. Don't serve undercooked turkey, of course. But you got to pull the thing out of the oven. Everybody's starving and they're in a hurry to eat. We're going to transfer this right onto the cutting board and we're going to go right into our lesson on how to carve a turkey. This is something good to know wherever you go, even if you didn't cook the turkey, you can always uh, make yourself welcome. You'll have to look at my tutorial to find how to cook a turkey, especially a turkey that's going in the oven frozen. That's what this one did. Put it in at 10 a.m. It's 527. All that time at 350 degrees. Part of it though, uh, which might have taken a little more time than you would have to take, is that uh, I kept opening the oven to shoot all these different video sequences. I've washed my hands, of course. Because now we're touching prepared food. It's not going to get sterilized again. See how easily this comes loose. These turkey wings, the little short segments, we'll just pile them there. I'll get the scooch over, you can see better. I hope so, we can see. Now, we're gonna get these out of the way. The leg, right here is the knee and it's attached to the thigh, which is right there. That's like a ball and socket joint. It's like a hip joint on a human being. Let's not think about that. Okay, and it's coming apart. We'll just throw it in the serving bowl for now. Same with this. Same thing. Can you see where that ball and socket joint comes together? Right there. Okay, well, it's separated. Beautiful, beautiful. That's what we want. We want this delicious turkey cut up and ready to eat. Here's the, the heart of the turkey matter. See the breastbone right here. Okay, we're going to cut on this side, we're going to cut on that side, and we're going to go down all the way, and then we're going to come back up, and we're going to slice this. But the easiest way to do it is to lift this right off of the carcass, right away from the turkey, so that you can slice it up. Now we're going along, the, the wishbone is right in here. We'll go along this way. Don't, it doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to be good. Turkey, don't get away from me. See, now we've got one of the breasts. I'm going for the other breast. Some people just love that crispy turkey skin. I'm one of those people. I bet you are too. You know, I don't like the breast meat as much as uh, other people do. I like the dark meat because it seems to me to have more flavor. But the wishbone you can get to right down here and then pop it out. Did you see that? I hope you did. There's really no reason. I think the tradition of wishbone breakage is uh, gone by the wayside. But when I was a kid, it was a big deal. You take the wishbone, somebody grabs one end and you grab the other and you break it. And whoever has the biggest piece after it's broken um, gets their wish. What's their wish? That we wouldn't do the stupid wishbone thing every... every this goes back day. in the uh, broth. This is another piece. We cooked that turkey dough. Fell off the bone. That was my plan, actually. That's how I like it. It's still moist, still juicy. I'm going to show you the butterball thing. Here, I want to try and preserve the skin. So I'm going to switch to a smaller knife, which I had sharpened recently. This bunch 
bunch of times, but we're going to do it fairly slow. This is uh, or uh, sliced fairly thin because I think if you have leftovers, this makes a better sandwich than a big thick slice. This is beautiful. Don't you think? Okay, so what we're doing is we're working our way through. We're taking the two breasts. We're trying to preserve skin if we can. Unless somebody comes along and they're real hungry and they're wondering what you're doing in the kitchen and then they just grab a big hunk of skin and eat the whole... I've had that happen. In fact, I've done it. So, once you get the breast ready, you can move the thigh off of the... Let's move two off of the serving plate. We're going to process them in a second. But first... Switch back to our big knife, which we will use like a spatula to lift this breast and place it somewhat presentably onto the serving tray. Beautiful. Now, you do the same thing with the other breast. And it doesn't matter that much. The fibers are running this way and you want to sort of cut them in half. When you cut the fibers in half, it makes it more tender. So I've already shown you a breast. We would cut and put the other breast there. We've got to get the drumsticks free of the thighs. The, this bone comes down here and it matches up with this bone here. So when it's properly cooked, you can usually work your way right through. Now there's a trophy for some big eater that says, give me a drumstick. Good pal, we're ready for you. There you go. Sometimes you can't hit that joint without a lot of carving experience. If that's the case, don't worry about it. Just keep hacking at it. It will come apart. The um, thighs have a lot of delicious dark meat on them. You can sort of bone your way through this thigh. Bone your way through. I'm going to get comments from the 15-year-olds in the comments. Anyway, boning my way through the turkey. And that is a beautiful turkey. You just keep following the same procedures. You don't want to get a lot of cartilage, sinew, stuff like that. You don't want to have a lot of big chunks. Um, I guess it's Chinese cooks. They sort of have a rule that it's, it's not the job of your guests. It's the job of the cook to chop things up into bite-sized pieces. So that's not how it is in, in my country. But I kind of like to follow that rule out of courtesy to my guests so they don't have a giant slab that they have to do a lot of cutting on. They can get the food in their mouth quicker and enjoy their dinner more. They don't have to be a skilled carver. This is fun. I always love to carve the turkey. I feel useful. Somebody always comes by and says, Can I help you? And I say, Yes, I, I'm, I'm upset. I need your help. I'm glad you asked. I need another drink. We always get it. This is the wishbone I was talking about. Surrounded by breast meat. That's enough turkey to feed your guests, unless you've got a whole bunch of guests, and then you just keep carving until this serving tray is just piled high. Delicious. Hot. Beautiful right, turkey. Move this over here and onto the white meat, the breast meat. Not onto the moist dark meat. We're just going to drizzle a little butter. This is a trick I learned at a steakhouse where as soon as you pull the steak off the grill and you're about to put it on the plate, send it out with the waitress. You would dip a, a brush in melted butter and 
stab it on the top of the steak to give it awesome flavor. Can you see this? I didn't buy a butter ball because they're more expensive and I don't have control over how much awesome butter flavor I give it. The guests won't know. They won't say, oh, this tastes like somebody dumped butter on it. But you saw the footage. Somebody did dump butter on it. Well, I hope you have a happy Thanksgiving and it sure was fun cooking with you and for you. Go for it. Try it. You can't really mess it up. If you're burning the turkey, you'll smell it. And then you pull it out of the oven. Shut off the oven. And have a happy Thanksgiving.